Hi, welcome to Barney Tech Channel. Hi, in this video, we are going to see SEMA code part 3, which is related to the configuration and parameter settings for SEMA code relay. For doing configuration, first we must know about motor starting type and hardware part of the module. There are different methods for motor starting. They are dual start, star delta start, soft starter, forward reverse start, etc. For checking hardware part of the module can be seen on schematic also but better need to take module physically and need to take notes on hardware part number which is associated with SEMA code relay through communication cable. For example, I am going to do DOL start configuration. Now we will see this module. This is SEMA code relay. This is CT. The power cable will go through on it and this also have the option for VT connection. Now we can see deeply on this hardware part which is highly necessary for configuration. For CT on the edge it will be having nameplate details. On this we have to note the part number. The part number for CT is 3UF7110-1AA01-0. Like this we have to note all part number which will be very useful for at the time of configuration. For SEMA code relay if we see the physically there will be a different code are attached together depend on their requirement. Here it have three. The first one is the main relay which will be communicating with all other code even display and remote communication. The second one is denoted by EM that means external earth fault checking so we need to note this code the third one is denoted by DM that means for digital input or node put for additional code need to be noted this part number also after checking all this we will go to configuration now open the TIA portal software for configuration now we are going to make a new file so go for add new device and select the main code with code which we have noted that is 3ueef011-1au00-0 select this on base unit and click now we can able to see this code is matching after selecting ok the next window will be open In this click on standard over here it is possible to select for various application but for us we need DOL starter to select direct start and click finish. The new added device name is control device iPhone 1 is added into the project. Over there click on device configuration. This is default configuration but need to configure according to the hardware which we have. According to the card connected physically present in main relay, next to the main relay is EM card. So we are going to add EM card over here. Now click the hardware card log on the right hand side. Over here expand on completely. Here we can able to see EM. Inside this need to check the part number. Method for adding this is very easy. Just drag and drop on the empty slot near to main relay on the device configuration. Now see here I just drag and drop over here. It was added successfully. Next I am going to add DM card. For this we have to check the port number. The module same like we done before. And go to add just drag and drop over near to EM card. After add successfully into the device configuration for DM card, now I am going to check CT port number. Since the CT before it's a default, the CT ratio is 0 0.3 to 3 
amps CT and the pot number also different but actual CT ratio is 0 0.3 to 4 amps and the pot number we have to note and we have to check accordingly we have to change for changing this is very easy just right click on the CT and apply change device now over here right side it have various current measuring device types on this we have to check the CT pot number which is exactly matching here I got this pot number correctly 3UF7110-1 WA01-0 it was exactly matching now select this device and click ok on the below by this we have done the hardware configuration successfully first I am going to make the name for this feeder for example I am giving name LNA540 space double X and dosing pump but we have to make actual feeder and tag number over your place for easy identification next I am going for Profinet settings if the SEMA code is connected with Profinet then we have to give the name correctly the Profinet name which is given by DCS engineer or which was given to hand over to you for Profinet name now we will see how to name the Profinet over here click on Profinet parameter then scroll down to station this device name is Profinet name when you click on over writing over here the device name and the name of the template will be matched automatically so in directly if we change the template name then the profinet name also get changed to change this template name we have two type one is we can do on device configuration click on main device and double click the device over here now you can able to see the changing name option we can able to see I keep x1a45i underscore 123 just for example I am keeping this name now it has to confirm and ensure the profinet name it has been changed or not look here it was changed now I am going for parameter settings here I am selecting voltage selection and also possible to change the type of the starter here also it is possible to change now I am going for production settings here you can able to see IS1 this is the motor full load current for example if, if your motor full load is 49 amps then you have to put a 49 amps just for example I am putting the current is a default value next this is very important selection is class motor thermal class this class is determined the motor starting time and the thermal curve selection this thermal trip will also follow this class according we selected but once it trip the reset will be determined by this cooling time this production always activate if it is above 115 percentage that is 115 percentage of the full load current and it will operate independent with starting time for example the full load current is 3 amps this production will activate 1.15 into 3 which is equal to 3.45 amps so the motor overload production will start to trigger above this current and it will start to pick up and it will wait until it get tripped according to its curve and once it get tripped the production cannot be reset and the motor cannot be started until it get cooled down here the cool down time I keep is 300 second so it will wait to reduce until 300 second in between the 300 to 0 second so it will started from 300 to 299 298 and it will started to decrease and it will reach to 0 in between this time 
the production will not be able to reset and it will not allow the motor to start again so we have to keep it in mind to keep this settings as per this this all about uh, overload production next is unbalanced production it is determined by percentage on response if we keep warm then it will not issue tripping if we keep trip then it is need to change from warm to trip next is stall production or jam this production is blocked during the motor starting time for example if we choose the class 5 then during 5 second the stall production will be blocked on every fresh start that is every new start of the motor next important production is i greater than this current setting should be greater than the motor starting current for example the here i keep 3 amps motor normally takes 6 to 7 times or 5.5 times of the start full load current according to this the production current we have to set here more than 7 times next is undercurrent production this can be used depend on your application next we are going to see the under voltage production some of the production will have the two condition for production activate here you can able to see the activate status and over here below you can see response also the activate status indicate when your production need to be activated and here we have a three option always activate activate when the module in service position activate when the module motor in running condition this is only for production activate for tripping below we have to set on response if you select on response trip then it will trip according to our settings now we go for earth fault production generally it have internal earth fault but here it has a external earth fault also as per our hardware module it have em card so it have external production also for internal earth fault it will calculate by itself by unbalanced current on it and the production will be blocked at the time of motor starting until with its class time but for external earth fault need to be separate ct and also the production activation has the same option like under voltage such as always activate during service position or during service position after motor start of time by this we came to the end of the production setting now we go for motor control over here first we will see the motor control station this control station is very important need to understand for on off module first we see the module selection in module selection we have s1 and s2 to activate s1 and s2 can be done by binary input or soft input from remote end let me see deeply i am going to explain by using binary input let us consider s1 is configured by dm1 input and s2 is dm1 input 2 as per the schematic diagram we have to do this configuration and for local start i'm going to configure the bu input 2 for stop signal and bu input 1 for start signal And when you see this mode selection, when S1 and S2 is not to activate, then local 1 will be activated. And when S1 is 0, that means not activate. And S2 is activate, then local 2 will activate. Corresponding this combination, this local 1, 2, 3 and remote will be activated. We will see one by one. 
if both input is not activated then local one will be activated during this time it can be control on off on local one module under various control such as local control plc pc and op op is operation panel or hmi here the on off configuration is only done on op remaining other we don't have any option so during this condition the on off can be done by hmi on the display of the relay next if s1 is not activated and s2 is activated then local 2 will be activated automatically as shown above in this case it will activate local start stop by binary input let me see how it will be working for local stop bu input 2 we have done configuration according to schematic this signal has to come continuously and the same time when we get the binary input 1 then the module will issue start command if the module get ready signal and and no other production is operated during the running condition if bu input 2 signal get missing that means the stop command is missing then it will issue the stop command from the operating panel here the stop command is operate reversely when you when you are not receiving the stop command the relay will consider to issue stop command when you get the continuous stop command then the relay will think there is no stop command receiving the relay will consider like this and also during this mode selection there is one more possibility from op panel also is able to on off so on off selection is depend on our requirement next if s1 is activated and s2 is not activated then it will go for local 3 mode this mode we are not using so this not having any effect next s1 and s2 get activated then it go for remote mode remote mode means that means dcs or pcs it is possible to give start and stop command next we are going to see control function this control command on off will work with associated with control station i am going to explain by small example let us consider the mode is in local 2 when you give the start command through bu input 1 then the start command will pass through the control station on once it get on it will check the feedback on here i have configured the current flow over the feedback configuration that means when the relay is given close command through magnetic conductor or soft starter or vft then relay should get back the motor running current motor running current flow on the power cable within 0.5 second if it this not getting the current feedback on the relay will issue stop command over here the 0.5 second we can able to change up to 25 second and also the feedback also can be changed according to the site situation but it is very good for keeping the current flow for feedback on and also for feedback time not recommended more than one second but it can be very according to your site situation by this we came to the end of the section i hope you all have got some idea about sima code relay configuration and parameter settings on next video we will see how to solve the problem if we get some issue on sima code we came to the end of this section see you on next video if you like this section then please share to your friends and colleagues Take care and bye from Barney Tech channel. Thank you for watching this video.